Hey everyone, I'm the Norm's Man. Uh, this is the next session of Within Mist and Shadows. Uh, Joe will be here shortly and he's not going to make it today. Uh, we last left off, finally, Durza had met back up with the crew. He had met up with Ornok and Lee. Um, come to find out, Durza had already had a plan to get rid of Crow. For he did not like Crow. His brothers did not like Crow. And to his um, surprise, Ornok in the last four days that they have not seen each other had already devised some sort of plan to take over the city and take these guys out themselves. It's not been four days. I've been working on this for months. It's just taking yeah. a good foothold in four days. Well, yeah. A lot has happened in these last four days since you've returned from uh, Corvosa. So, um, the plan now is for Durza to poison Crow using Crow's own father against him, and if it doesn't work, him and his brothers plan on either fighting their way out or dying a glorious, chaotic death. Durza's got balls the size of my head. Man, I'm telling you, yeah. <laughs> Whether they're outside the sack or not. Um, yeah. <laughs> So, um, so this, and this is what he planned on doing. He laid it out to you guys. Uh, he didn't want you involved. Uh, he already knows Lee cannot be in the compound because they don't allow anybody yeah. but orc breed there. He's kind of doing this on his own. Um, do you guys want to establish a place to start to meet up because, um, you really don't have any contacts per se, at Bullseye. No. Um, Lee is terrified to go to Bullseye. Yeah. Which... I don't know. Which, I don't think anybody realizes that yet, though. Yeah. Because he has been on a roller coaster, probably, a, well, let's say more than any of you guys. For the most part, I would say probably a little bit more than you. Yeah. Um, I haven't been through some bad shit, really. No, you haven't. Uh, you've had pretty nice. I mean, I've... I killed a paladin one time. They went through all the hell, and you've benefited through it all. <laughs> kind of. Um, but maybe you guys should establish a meeting, a location point to start meeting up at. I say boneyard. That little, um, the little, uh, the graveyard. Yeah. yeah. The big black spot. Yeah. You, you know, you know, like the little secret thing that we went into. Yeah. But his own. Yeah, he does. I do. Durza don't. Well, no, he doesn't. We can explain it to him. Though. Like, yeah, I'm not even there. I, I mean, I'll explain it to him. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting there talking to him. All right, so this is going to be your not your new. It, it's separate from the cult. It's separate from the manor. It's kind of our own thing. You know, outside I mean? the city. Yeah, it's. Uh, I like it. All right, so it's got an alchemical lab in it already. Yeah. Um. Okay, right, so he is going to go set his plan into motion. Uh, I assume Lee will accompany him. As far as he can, I would guess. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to sleep for a little bit. You're going to sleep yeah. for a couple of hours, which you've been doing all day. Yep. What are you going to do? Um, and I didn't have anything huge. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to probably go talk to Saul. I want to let him know uh, I trust him quite a bit. I'm going to go let him know that there was already a plan in motion through Durza to take out one of the guys in charge in town. Um, Croat. I'll let him know that. I'll stay there for a little bit, have a few drinks. Okay. Then I'll go back to the manor. So you're going to head to Saul's. Yeah. Uh, evening's approaching. It's probably about 4, 4.30 in the afternoon. Uh... Things are starting to build up there. The crowds are getting more thicker. It's not. Um, you're gonna go and meet with him. Uh, you know exactly where he's at. Oh yeah. I'll let you ride in. It's the same routine. The guy with the horns kind of gives you the spill about some seventieth layer. Yeah. The abyss kind of rolls his eyes because it's always a different number. Um. Saul so sitting there at the bar, greeting customers, talking, whatnot. Uh, you approach him. Uh, 
I guess you're wanting to meet up in his office, or... Oh, yeah. I won't ever talk. Yeah. Well, you're going to keep up. Hey, uh, I ain't talking to you crap. Yeah. All right, so, uh... Heading upstairs, it's uh, business as usual. He doesn't pour himself a drink. He doesn't pull your drink. Sits up behind his desk, asks you, uh, what's on your mind? Huh? I mean, it's it's rare that you've, I don't think you've ever met him twice in one day. No. So, uh, you can kind of tell maybe there's a bit of a worry on his face. Um, I mean, if I recognize a worry, I'll say, I, mean, there's not, I don't think there's anything to worry about, but I'll tell him that, um, I've met back up with Durza. You know, I really appreciate you sending your guy out for him. Uh, so I, I, I've been able to meet back up with him. Um, he came to me with a plan that really kind of fits right in with something that we got going on. Um, but I'll tell him that uh, he's came in contact with two forms of poison. Wait, did he say that he wouldn't tell me about the second? No, he did. Okay. Because you were talking about putting in an alcohol supply that I think even Evan had brought up, or maybe it was you, that, you know, you could smoke cigars with him, just not smoke the ones that he's yeah. in. So you know about both types of poison he's came in contact well, with. I'll tell him that he's came across two types of poison in his uh, travels. Um, and he wants to take Crowd out with it. Um, how soon? Uh, because to do what we're doing, I mean, there's a timetable, and to take one of Cromarty's men out really sets things in motion. I agree. And, um, to be honest with you, I wasn't expecting this so soon. I'm you can tell he's very caught off guard by this. I, I'll tell him your reaction was basically my reaction. I, I was kind of floored with him taking this initiative. Uh, he wants to do this tonight. He wants this to happen. Um, and he's, he's told me to stay out of it. I don't have any ties um, to this at all. His eyes are... When you say tonight, his eyes get like really wide, like it was very unexpected. Yeah. Um. And he's like, "You do realize that this will put Cromarty on guard really quickly. This will put the uh, his other crime lords on guard because now one of them's gone." Yeah. Um. I've gotten word that uh, you know. Apparently, this has been happening, you know, besides what happened Robert's Cove has been going on in other places, too. What else do you know? Um, I heard not too long ago in Magnamar they've been hit pretty hard. So, whatever he's moving around, someone is stopping themselves. Did he tell us about the boat or anything? The who, Crow? No, um, Joe. Joe. Yeah. Well, I'll tell him. I'll, I'll say. I mean, are you? If you're referring to the boat being blown up, then the yeah, Roderick's uh, Cove. Yeah. Joe. I mean, um, Durzub was actually. That was his boat. That. That's the reason we had to send your guy after him because that was his ride back. Hmm. Um, my he, man told me of no such things. Which uh, is he, he acquired nothing unusual. He acquired horses. They found him. A little out of the city. Hmm. That really, uh. makes things interesting and difficult at the same time. Because to put Crow on notice is a start, but that is also Cromarkey's money as mm -hmm. well. So that will make him even a harder target to get to. Also, you have these other crime bosses, which are going to tighten up their own security. And I don't know if you remember, but one of them's unaccounted for. Yeah, the spy. For all I know, he could be here. Yeah, the spy. That's not that's not left my my mind. I've thought about that. I mean. For all you know, he could have been in Cromarty, uh, Croak's crew there. 
trying to figure out what's going on. He could have been, he could be following you around. I mean, your boys were missing there for a day. Yeah. He could be anybody. He could be Lee. He could be Garrett. Could be. I'm killing him, don't worry. I'm may, killing may, him may, right may, now. Maybe Garrett's just playing the spot of Garrett. He's got a new character on the way, and it's part of the game to throw you off. <laughs> don't worry. I'll kill them all. Next time I see him. No, um... I'll tell him that, I mean, that's very true. All of that could be true, but to move forward, we can't be afraid of that. It's not that I'm afraid. It's just that it makes things very, very difficult. Because if he fails, then they're, they're going to know that not only are they being attacked on another front, but someone else is after him. And you have to think, you're tied to him. You're not necessarily tied to me in the same degree that he is. Our ties are easily cut compared to yours and him, which, I mean, there's people in this town that have seen you guys together. Yeah. And the rest of your crew. So not only will it be you who will be headhunted, but you have Garrett and your friend Lee as well. We've been, we've, we were put together through, um, through um, Pearson, and we traveled through Pearson until it was time to break away, like we were done with him, and then then he disappeared after that. There wasn't a lot that we did that wasn't actually, we didn't establish ourselves as a group, I don't think, besides the whole Pearson thing. But here's the thing, though. You're probably not thinking about it, but Pearson takes you people and runs you through these missions so other people get an idea of your value towards them. Mm -hmm. Do you think that you working for Crow, that Crow only pays attention to you through all that? No. So, I mean, it's almost a guilty by association, and for the sense, I... As you can tell, I've hired men through uh, mm -hmm. Pearson too. That's how I met you. Right. Were some of the same people with you the first time you done it, with you the time that I hired you? Nope. So see, so therefore you're a core unit at that time. Mm -hmm. So you're already tied to each other at that time. I was just thinking my out would be, I was, I worked with him through Pearson and then, okay, um, that's all I was yeah. thinking. But you, you have to understand the inner workings of the underworld of cities and whatnot too. For instance, um, you told me what had happened in Corvosa. Mm -hmm. Do you not think that there was people that seen you go to that tavern together? I mean, that place was destroyed. Your friends were there. You may have not been with them when it happened, but you were seen with them there. Yeah. I mean, that's true. Were not some of the people you left with, went went with there, not there by the time you arrived? Oh, the vampire? Well, no. The, no well, the other two also. Oh, uh, that's true, yeah. So, I mean, you're, I mean, to me, that would tell people that you're knocking people off. So, I mean, I'm just warning you the attention you might have already drawn to yourself and you're not aware of before this happens. That's fine. I'm not... Because from personal experience, people that you think are on your side tend to stab you in the back. What are you smiling at? You're like, oh, God. There's that seed. There's that seed. No. My, my <laughs> first thought was him. When he said that? No, my first thought was, yeah, my first thought was, he appears to be on my side. Well, who else appears to be on your side, too? <laughs> Everyone. 
That's the thing, though. I can't. I can't go down that path if I'm really trying to take over the city. I've got to actually trust. Well, powers of frickle business. No, I know. You know, when it comes to power, you've got to trust yourself more than you trust your allies. Yeah, but I can't. I can't do it myself. Not yet. Well, let's uh, play it this way. Money buys power. Yeah. I don't. Do you do you, do you relate that to him? What you just said to me that you know I gotta trust people. That you know he's on your side. Do you say that to him? Oh no. Okay. You know, but he'll tell you, you know, money has what bought power underneath me. That's, Maybe power money will buy power for us. That's a thing, though. I mean, if money buys power, they can be bought out from underneath us. We gotta build something on more than money. Who says we allow them to get to that point? Well, <laughs> I I like that. <laughs> um, he got a laugh. He's like, I've learned quite a bit since my last endeavor here in Riddleport. I mean... That's fine. To hire the muscle and then when it's not needed. It's not needed. But it, the question is finding the right muscle to trust. Um, Cromarkey's guards are pretty loyal. Yeah. So we need loyalty like that bar ourselves. So is this an avenue you think we should search? I mean, you you obviously have a small fraction of power underneath you. I you have some people. I'm, I'm building um, a little at a time. I have some of my own. Um, will that be enough to do what you think we'll need them for? Well, it depends on how we're going to go about this. Uh, if we can take out, if we can take out one. Um, that's going to be one less that he can rely on if we take one out. But if not, then they're completely guarded. I have mine, you have yours. I mean, if we go out to all-out war, no, I don't, I don't know how many men he has if we can go straight to war. But, uh, if we're able to take the group we have, your group, uh, maybe we can persuade another. So maybe we're to the point now that we need to plan around what our friend Durzum's going to do. So if it succeeds, then what? I mean, you have an empty power, a seat in power there, a vacuum per se. Yeah. I mean, do we try to set the the rest of the crime bosses against each other. Yeah. Do we feel that vacuum ourselves? So, like you, we continue to have someone on the inside. I I thought about that myself, and I don't I don't think that. I mean, I, I'm just a foot soldier right now. Like not even that. I'm just I'm, I'm, I'm strong back for um, him right now. So. I don't think that there's any way Kermarkey would allow anybody like me to step up or or somebody. I mean, unless I, you know somebody that might. I personally, I have no one in mind. Um, if he would, it would honestly be someone he thought he really trusted. Yeah. Or someone he knew could easily be bought out. And, um,. I'm not saying that you are not the man for a job, but you are there. You do tend to stick out more than the men that are under his employment. I do like to look rich. It's like, very true, like, just like Crow. Yeah, that's very true. I didn't think about that. But I'm just saying, I mean, that there, there's something which may lead him to believe I can be bought. That's very true, but it also may lead him to believe that this was your work. Well, that's also true. And honestly, I don't know if Cromarkey's the man who 
smiles upon someone like that mm-hmm. wanting to take power. I mean, that's a gamble you would have to take. Yeah. You know what? I like this. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll do it. Okay. Okay, so our plan is, if he succeeds, you're going to try to fill the void. Yeah. All right. Now, what if he fails? If he fails? Because then, then Croak's going to know that, like I said, someone else is after him besides these robes. Because obviously, your friend Durzab looks nothing like the men you described to me at all. Nah. Um, and that pro- that poses a huge problem. To cover myself, remember, I was supposed to leave, mm-hmm. and now I'm still here. That puts an awfully big target on my back. Mm-hmm. And trust me, I'm full. I'm full of confidence that I can take care of myself. But there has to be some other type of distraction to throw him off. Do not need him looking in my direction. Not such a bigger person. So you want to? Yeah, I mean, settle down. What? So if he fails, we. I'm gonna say if he fails, Durza is dead. Durza won't walk out of there alive. Oh, you've been in there. You would know how many men that he Right. Has. There's a won't walk out of there alive. Um, they take him and walk by the fucker. He might. Well, and, and I'll tell you that. I'll, I'll, I'll say, and he's not going to lay down and take it. I mean, it. I'm completely prepared for that, too. Mm-hmm. So um, He's not going to lay down and take it. No. He will take out as much as he can. Yeah, I've gathered that. Um, he's he's crazy. I don't know if you knew that. <laughs> but he seems to like me just a little bit. And I, that's good to me. I like that. <laughs> uh, I actually think if we can do what we can do, he would make he'd make a very good um, guy on the ground uh, to protect us. Um, I don't doubt that at all. <laughs> um, by his methods of interrogation, <laughs> yeah, that was fun. Um, I did spend fifty gold on that. But we do. We are regardless. What happens? We do have to put a plan in motion when this happens, and I am more concerned with it failing than succeeding. That is the biggest thing. What do we do if it fails? Because then it's like I I, I can guarantee you that the guard will double up. Oh yeah. Those all all the little operations that Cromarkey doesn't have a major finger in, and I'm t- telling you his. Finger is in every mate, leaving the smallest, you know, operations in town. He'll start shutting down any operation that he thinks that he does not trust. Anything he doesn't have completely full investment in, he'll shut down because he'll think someone's coming for him. That's what I would do. Yeah. If I knew what was coming oh, at the time, I'd have shut everything. That, that's exactly what. Yeah, that's exactly what he'll do. Well, we need to figure out. Who he doesn't have complete control over. That's easier said than done. You mean, you look at all your other little gamble, gambling rings, your little clock prostitution rings. He has his finger in everything because he runs the taxes in the city. But all the little ones, he'll start shutting down. Yeah. He, he will bring them into his fold, and if he feels that he doesn't trust them, he, he will do away with them. And that's bad because... And then the streets will start filling up with bodies and then you're causing even more mass panic in the streets. All the people not involved are affected and then you won't be able to move around at all and then what we are planning will either fail or we'll be caught in an all-out war in the streets. I, for one, am not ready for that. No, we're not ready. We do not have... We don't have the force. No. I kind of want the bell now. Oh, I know you. 
<laughs> you're like, you, know, you, you don't hear this. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but if I did, I'd be like, you're what? I'm just going to tell a guy. Yeah. Yeah. This is you're... drugs. I'm poisoned right now. Yeah. Let's burn this. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I told him before he got here. I was like, I want to change all the doors all, and just start shooting fireballs into the windows and burn it down. <laughs> um, uh, I mean, I know... Uh, unless unless he has a backup plan, unless Durzab has a backup plan. You know about a backup plan. Uh, well, I'm talking... We're talking if you fail. Yeah, for, general for poison in general. For, yes. for failure. What are you saying if you fail? For failure, you're dead. Mm-hmm. Oh, and yeah. Then the, you don't have anything past that, though. Mm-hmm. Um, and, I, and I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll tell Saul, I said, his backup plan is to be dead. Yeah, just to die. To get to speed you up, talking what they need to do if you succeed. Mm-hmm. Or what you need to do if you fail. Uh, what we need to do is, if we succeed is something we can talk about a little later. Failure. Well, is my my, we my, need my to guy doesn't even look towards that. Yeah. Get this done, then we'll see how it goes. Yeah. That's what I'm doing. But do. Saul sees it in a totally yeah, different way. You guys may be playing. I'm just not a doer. No, you're a doer. Yeah. You 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 well, you, do you this. This is we'll see what happens. Yeah. This was a bad idea. I want fire. It's it, it, it's murder <laughs> and then ask questions. Not ask questions and murder. <laughs> this is a bad idea. I want fire. <laughs> I told them to let me get out first. <laughs> yeah. What do you do? It chained it from the inside and set it on fire. <laughs> I eat the key. <laughs> oh no. Made a mistake. I'm pulling out my own guts now. <laughs> So, but he's really, um, really, you know, that's his main thing. What happens when it fails? Because it's going to come down, and it's going to come down hard. Well, are you afraid you'll be targeted? Am I afraid? No. I have lived through enough not to be afraid of what's going to happen. But they will come towards me. Do you want... To get it, leave town? No. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I'm minute to minute. I am too. And if it comes to a roll of the dice, it comes to a roll of the dice. Um, I've got my own dice. <laughs> Let me give you this 20 with all ones on it. Yeah. Um, I know... I have an idea of who will be cracked down on the hardest. Who you found? Oh yeah. And whip out the book. If you have an idea who may be who may be targeted the hardest, is there a way that we can deflect a lot of blame onto them? Is there something we can do? Um hold up, let me get this list uh you have Elias Tamerhawk. He runs the Order of Cyphers. Um, one man that you've already met. Yeah. Varsalis Selfanine will be cracked down upon. The, the Rainy Hall Hall Hall. No, that's one of the crime bosses. Oh. That's Zentra. Um, which he'll tell you, he wouldn't even be surprised if he cracks down on his own men just to cover himself. Um... Tremor Rodheim, he runs the gas forges in town. That is one of the most heavily taxed places in town because of the minerals and gases that come from the dwarves there. Um, so Rafa Padme, she runs the house of the Silken Bell, which is the main bordello in town. Are you writing these down now? Yeah, uh, I'll have to reread. I'll have, have you reread the first three. Okay, what do you got? I have Sarafa Padme. Okay, Tromord Rodheim. You want me to spell these out? Just let me know. Yeah, spell them. Okay, T R O M A R D. Then R O L D H E I M. What's he doing? Uh, he he's a dwarf that runs a gas forges. Gas course. Mm-hmm. Is he also running a modern town? Mm-hmm. Uh, you yeah, have Elias Tamerhawk. It sounds spelled just like it sounds Elias Tam- Tamerhawk. He runs the Order of the Cyphers in town. 
which is basically one of the the group that studies all the Thessalonian ruins and whatnot. Uh, so let's see. Padme was the um, the she ran. So she runs the house of the Silken Bill. Okay. And you got Bartle's self name. I'm sleeping. You're sleeping. Uh, All right. What was that when you said? Uh, what do you have? I have. Uh, um, he is. Uh, Rodifin <laughs> is Gas Forges. Padme. Runs the House of Sigma Vale. Tamarhawk, Order of the Cyphers. And then you have Varlus. The Varlus. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's... Mm-hmm. Varlus is one of the guys, too. Oh, yeah. That he'd crack down on. Because the eyes are hanging to create the organization in town. Um... Those are your main three guys you would crack down on. I'm going to explain to him the situation with the cult and Varlas. Okay. So you're gonna you're gonna tell him what happened. So Fuck yeah, dude. This guy's my business partner. Okay. So you're gonna lay like, everything that's happened to him. In the last couple days, you're going to just lay in. Um, well, when, when he mentions Varlas, I'm going to be like, I've met Varlas. And um, very surprised by this because not a lot of people have met Varlas. He keeps to himself. I'll tell him that Varlas reached out Reach and out touched a couple, of, <laughs> touched Garrett and Lee, <laughs> and he, he spoke with me, and I'll tell him that... Um, um, who he met the night before okay. is was a wanted person by Varlas. So I'll tell him that I was able to make ties with Varlas and have the cult. Um, this is the that's the way I see it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know if it's true with what you got going on, so. Okay. But so what? So what you're getting at, and what what he what he's thinking is, so you're saying we can count Varlas amongst us. I've talked to Varlas, and he said the cult was what I wanted to do. I can do whatever I want with the cult. I don't know. I don't know if I'm good enough with Varlas to for where he will have our back. I don't know. That may take a little bit of time. Um, I just can't remember if we had that conversation or not. No, I don't no, think no. we did. No. Um, he'll tell you, well, as soon as you can get information with Barless, since your boy Durza plans on doing this night, the quicker. Because. The better. Quicker the better. Because Barless. Is tied to a lass. The cult, the cult of the ciphers, the uh, order of the ciphers in the eye of arcane, are have a well-founded relationship with one another. Hmm. They tend to help each other out. Where the order of the ciphers is spread more around the country of Varicia. The Isle of Arcane is very much set right in the port, so they share information with the magic they find in the surrounding area of the town. So you may be able to kill two birds with one stone. Yeah. So man. use your words wisely. Yeah. If if I can, man, if I could talk, if I could talk one person into it, if I could talk Varlas into it, I may pick up a lot of people. So we'll see. So I like Grawl a lot. Would you say you're heading towards Sulfonine Manor right oh, now? Oh yes. As soon as I get done with everything that I need to talk to him about, because I have these people, that would kind of be like the hit list with uh, <coughs> Cromarchy. This is like the people he would kind of come down on the most. Uh, well, that's who he just believes. Well, because yeah, they yeah. are influential people within Riddleport. Yeah. Um, 
I, I mean, I know they're they're not going to be up until dark. Well, well, I won't say you've had this conversation for a while. It's getting dark. Okay. Well, I'm gonna head. Because I think it's like four thirty. This conversation probably took you about an hour and a half, two two and a half hours. Okay. It's well, our time just start early. Actually, summer just started. As of today, is your first month of summer. I've been keeping track of time. I think you said that. Because tonight's the new moon. Yeah. It's it's a sacrificial ritual time. Yeah. So you're gonna head to the manor. Yeah. 